Hi, my name is Reed Winder and I like making stuff, especially with CircuitPython. Today we're going to take a look at controlling DC motors with CircuitPython. DC motors using the L289 driver board. Okay, let's get started. So you might start out thinking, okay, I'll connect the motor directly to the CircuitPython board, just like I do any other device. You connect the ground to ground and a GPIO pin from the micro to the motor. You write a CircuitPython program to set the GPIO pin high and epic fail. You see, the problem is the CircuitPython board doesn't have enough voltage or current to drive a large DC motor. Sure, there are some tiny DC motors that can be driven by a GPIO pin, but in general, you need to provide more voltage and more current than the CircuitPython board can provide. See, here's the motor connected directly to a power supply. It needs 12 volts, and when it's turned on, it's drawing almost 50 milliamps. The CircuitPython board can only provide 3.3 volts and a few milliamps. So we need something in between our micro and our motor to drive it correctly. What we need is the L289N driver board shown here on Amazon. It's specifically made to provide the voltage and current drive that a DC motor needs. So let's take a look at hooking up the L289N driver board between our micro and our motor. So with a motor, if we have a motor, we'll, you know, we'll just put the M here for the motor, and we run, it has two connections. If we run current through the motor, let's do it this way. So in this case, we hook 12 volts up to this pin and ground to this pin, and current flows through, then the motor will rotate clockwise. If alternatively we then take the motor and all we do is switch the connections and we put 12 volts on this connection and ground up here, then current's going to flow the opposite direction. So now current's going to flow through the motor this direction and we're going to spin um, counterclockwise. So that's what, this is the function of the L289N is to basically switch the current flow through the motor so that we can have the motor going in two different directions. So how does it do that? It does it um, that the L289N is what we call an H bridge, and it's going to be kind of obvious on why it's an H bridge. Um, if we look at it, it has four transistors. Yep, the top two are connected here to our 12 volts, and the bottom two are connected to ground. And then in the middle here is our motor. And the reason we call this an H bridge is because it looks like an H. The four transistors with the middle and the branch, this forms an H. And what this allows us to do is when we want current to flow through the motor for it to go clockwise, what we do is we turn on this transistor and this transistor and then current will flow this direction through the motor because this transistor is on and this transistor is on and we will get a spin in the clockwise direction. Likewise, if we want it to go the other direction, now if we want current to flow in the other direction, we turn the opposite two transistors on. So if we turn this transistor on and this transistor on, current flows from 12 volts through the motor 
down to ground this way. And with that, then we get a counterclockwise rotation. So the LM, the L289N board is high current, high power transistors, which allow us to run hundreds of milliamps or more of current through the motor in two different directions. And that's what allows us to um, change the direction of the motor. Now to change the speed, what we do is we have a pulse width modulated signal which actually controls how quickly or how long we leave each of these transistors on when the current's flowing in one direction and that gives us our speed control. Okay, this is our circuit Python code to control our DC motor. We import boards so that we can get the pin numbers associated with the Metro M4 Express. We import time so that we can have some control over time delays in the program. We import digital I.O. to control the input-output pins on the board. And finally, we import pulse I.O. so that we can create a PWM modulation signal to control the speed of the motor. The N1 and N2 signals on the motor driver board control the direction of the motor set these pins up as outputs. The ENA or enable A pin is connected to a pulse width modulation object from the Pulse IO library. With the N1 and N2 pins we control the direction of the motor and with the enable output which is connected to the pulse width modulator we control the speed of the motor. We set the duty cycle of the pulse width modulator to zero. This means the motor will be stopped. The duty cycle value can be anything from 0 to 2 to the 16th power minus 1 or 65,535. 0 is stopped and 65,535 is full speed. Set the N1 value to true and the N2 value to false, the motor will spin clockwise to 65,535. That's the maximum speed of our motor. When we save this to the circuit Python board, now our motor begins running at full speed. If we come in now and we change this to 20,000, we slow our motor down. And if we change this to 10,000, we slow it down even more. And if we change it to 8,000, we'll get it to where it'll just barely run. Now it's just barely spinning. If we go much lower than that, it won't really spin at all. If we... Now let's define um, two constants here. Clockwise, which is when the N1 value is true and, and the N2 value is false, and counterclockwise when we flip them around. Remember from our H-bit bridge discussion, when we let current flow through the motor in two different directions, we control the direction of the motor. So now we then, um, now that we have that, if I come in here and I do n1.value and n2 value equals counterclockwise, the motor's going to spin in the opposite direction. So if we then take our duty cycle and make it equal to 20,000, we're going to stop spinning uh, clockwise and now go counterclockwise. We'll save that program. Now we're spinning in the opposite direction and if we slow it down we'll see it actually spinning that way. So let's do a little more complete program where we spin the motor in both directions. So now we'll spin the motor clockwise and we'll get it started with by setting the voltage higher to, to overcome the static friction of the motor not wanting to start turning and then we can slow it down and we'll run clockwise for three seconds and then we'll flip the direction around to counterclockwise, start it at a higher speed and then slow it down so that you can see the motor spinning at the lower speed. Now our motor starts spinning high speed then we slow it down then we do it if we want to now we can we can stop the motor in here by just turning the duty cycle to zero now I'll stop and 
Now it started clockwise, counterclockwise, and it'll stop. At the beginning of the video, there was this nice um, red and blue water uh, color effect. Well, that was made with motors and NeoPixels. Um, if you like that, you need to, su to subscribe and click the bell at the bottom to be notified because uh, next episode we'll be looking at motors, a special kind of motor, which is a uh, peristaltic pump and how to make that uh, colored water effect. That's with a laser cut, painted cutout with acrylic diffusers. I'll show you how to work with NeoPixels, which are RGB LEDs that can be controlled with CircuitPython and how to make that color effect you saw at the beginning of the video. Thanks for watching. See you next time.